Welcome back to the Bible video game, everybody. So we've already done Adam and Eve. We've already done Cain and Abel. We've already done Noah. Now we're going to watch Tower Babel, watch Job, and what was next? Play as Abraham. Try to fit that all in a 15, 20 minute video. So let's hop right in right now and get started. People from all the lands came together in harmony to build a new city, a new world. Their building accomplishments were so great that Nimrod, Noah's great-grandson, envisioned building a grand tower. To protect us from any outside danger, we shall build a great tower high enough to reach the heavens. This tower will make us famous and put fear into any outsiders who want to cause us harm. People will see it for miles, and we will be invincible. In dangerous times, our armies will rally around it to prevent our people from being conquered. In time, God became unhappy with the people as they hunted for power and fame. In order to stop the tower from being built, God commanded that the people all speak different languages. I can't understand a word you're saying. How can we work listening to that nonsense that you speak? The construction of the tower came to a halt because the workers could no longer understand one another. Over time, the giant tower of Babel began to crumble. And slowly, the families who spoke the same language moved away and settled in lands far from Babylon. <clears throat> all right, isn't it cool? All these stories explaining how things happen. So cool. On to Job. In the land of Uz, there was a man named Job, who was perfect and upright. He feared God and avoided evil at all costs. He and his wife had seven sons and three daughters. His possessions included 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and servants to care for them all. God has truly blessed me with all that I have. God watched from his throne and was proud of his follower, but Satan was out to prove God wrong. If you did not prevent bad things from happening to Job and bless him with all the riches that you have given him, he would not love and worship you as he does. If you took all his possessions and good fortune away, he would turn on you and curse your name. If you believe this to be true, then I will allow you to test him. Take his blessings away, but do not cause him any harm. 
As Satan's bet with God commenced, he quickly began to bring catastrophe to Job's life. Help! All the oxen and donkeys were killed by the attacks of the Sabaeans. I barely escaped, and I'm the only survivor. Suddenly, three more messengers came running in from the fields, each from a different direction, and each with worse news than the last. All the sheep and shepherds were struck by lightning, and now they are all dead. I'm the only one left. Chaldeans invaded the fields and slaughtered all the camels and their drivers. I fled as fast as I could so I could tell you. Job, all your children were crushed and killed when your son's house collapsed. I'm sorry. I was the only one that survived. No! Through all the grief that devastated Job's life, he still never blamed God for his tragedies. Instead, in his agony, he cut off all his hair and tore his clothing to shreds. God, you brought me into this world and blessed me with all that I had when I had nothing. Praise be to my Lord. You were wrong, Satan. He still praises me even after you destroyed his life. Because he still has his health and wasn't harmed. People would not praise you if they were struck with illness. If you believe that ruining the health of a righteous man will make him lose his faith, then go ahead and cast illness upon him, but do not kill him. Satan quickly returned to Earth and cursed Job with a sickness so horrible that it left him covered in blisters and unable to sleep. The little sleep he was able to get, Satan haunted with nightmares. Job was unable to eat, and soon he appeared to be just skin and bones. Still, he did not curse God. However, his wife had a different opinion. This is all God's fault. He has taken everything we loved and owned from us. Now, you have been stricken with an awful disease. Why don't you just curse God and die? Job consoled his wife as he looked at her through his blistered eyelids. My dearest wife, don't be foolish. God blessed us with so many great things, but we must accept the bad things as well. Job's friends went to spend time with him after they heard of his horrible sickness. When they arrived at the garbage dump to see him, the disease had affected Job so badly that his friends barely recognized who he was. For seven days, they all sat in silence. And then suddenly, Job yelled out in a cry of despair. God, why are you allowing all these horrible things to happen to me? I have loved and followed you my whole life, and I have never sinned. Eliphaz, one of Job's closest friends, was astonished by his irrational question. You need to calm down, Job. From all that I have learned and seen, God does not punish people who have not sinned. What have you done to deserve this? I've done nothing wrong. I have not sinned. God knows that I obey and love him, so even if I have sinned by mistake, he should forgive me. I'm sorry, but you cannot blame God for your misfortune. If God would let me know what sin I committed, then I would be able to confess and ask for his forgiveness. You idiot. If you sit there and insist that you have not sinned, but think God has punished you for no reason, then you do not know anything about the Lord. You must ask God to forgive you and apologize for your wrongdoing. You are not acting like my friends. The worst things imaginable have destroyed my life, and you dare insult me with your words. You do not speak for God. I would accept this punishment and even death if he would just come and speak to me himself. Only then would I trust him again. Suddenly, out of the heavens, God came and spoke to Job in the midst of a storm. Be a man and stand on your own two feet, Job. You will answer all the questions that I ask. Do you understand? Yes, my lord. You know nothing of my ways and will never understand how I work. Remember, I control the universe and I am in charge of this world. Do you think you could have created the earth and everything in it? Could you hold rule over all the animals, over every living thing? Could you command the motion of the sun, the moon, or the stars, and everything in this universe? 
Answer me. I... I... I am the reason you and everything exists. You do not know the greater good I desire for you. Your role is to simply trust me, even when times are bad. God's words brought Job to his knees. Now I know of my sin. Please forgive me for speaking of things I will never understand. I have faith and put my trust in you, my lord. God quickly responded to Job's plea for forgiveness and healed him. He was blessed with twice as many animals, was given ten more children, and lived a long and prosperous life. Another amazing Bible story. Oh, the Bible's full of great stories like that. People say it's boring. Um, I think I've run out of time. Cause I feel like if I play as Abraham, that might take a while. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll probably do Abraham and Lot next time. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. If you want to come back next time to watch me play as Abraham, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get the notification when I do. And I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye!